So Jesus is back home. Jesus is back home. It's Capernaum. And Capernaum is home. Now, you know the phrase that pays. Say it with me. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. When I travel, I take my pillow with me. It's my pillow. That's not a my pillow, but it's my pillow. And I'd rather do without some clothes to have my pillow because there ain't no pillow like my pillow. Now, when I travel in a vehicle, I take my fan. I do. I'm telling you, my, my kids laugh at me. We, we, we go to a hotel and they'll come in a different door. All right, we're not walking with you, Dad. That's embarrassing. And I'm smiling because it's my fan. Stephanie's like, oh my God, I can't believe we're in the Omni with your fan. This is my fan. This is my fan. It's like your dog. That's your dog. Maybe like a cat, I would imagine. It's your cat. That's my fan. And you see, I'm a light sleeper. And so, you know, if someone's snoring, I'm not sleeping. Stephanie doesn't snore, so you know, don't tell her I said she snores. But, uh, um, if there's light, it wakes me up. Anybody like that? You're sensitive? If I hear something, we got two full-grown Rottweilers who think, they bought, think that we bought a leather couch for them. <laughs> they think it's their couch. We just living in their world. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, man, one of them, the puppy, the puppy's, uh, gosh, almost two years, a little over a year and a half. The puppy's got this deep voice now. It's not a little puppy anymore. So like, I can be upstairs, I'll come downstairs, she'll forget I was upstairs, and then she barks, and I jump. And I know that's my dog, but that dog, that, you got to bark. So if I'm sleeping in the middle of the night, and that bark goes off, which doesn't normally happen, wakes me up. I don't want to wake up when I'm sleeping. I want to get to that REM sleep, that deep sleep, restorative sleep. It's no place like home. So I carry my pillow and my fan with me, unapologetically. I know you'd be judging me, but it's my fan. That's my pillow. There's just some things about the comforts and the comfort of home that's special. Would you agree? And so Capernaum was special. Although later Jesus would rebuke Capernaum because of their lack of faith, their lack of belief. It was his hometown. Now, don't think like New York City. This is just right off the Sea of Galilee. It's right off the shores of Galilee, and it's a fishing community. So imagine, like a long time ago, back when Destin was small, imagine just that as a fishing village. Capernaum was where Jesus did miracles, and Capernaum is where Jesus did ministry. In fact, if you go to Israel with us next year, we're going to go in the fall. I hope you come. It's amazing. You got to go to Israel sometime in your life, and we're going to be going until Jesus comes. And so whatever that is, that'll be our last trip. Then we'll be in the Holy Land for real. But uh, we're going to go to Israel. And when you come to Capernaum outside, there's a big sign. How many have been to Israel know what I'm talking about? And on that sign, it says hometown of Jesus, the home of Jesus. Capernaum was a special place. And, and it was a place where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law it was a place where Jesus called disciples. In fact, Jesus called uh, Peter and his brother Andrew and James and John, the brothers, the twins, the sons of thunder. How'd you like that nickname? Who are you? I'm one half of the sons of thunder. And what was your name? I mean, he like thunder and lightning. The sons of thunder. Jesus gave that nickname. I'm like, Jesus, is. let's go. He called Peter and Andrew and James and John. And one day Jesus went right up into a tax collector's office. He opened the door. He walked in. Jesus walked in right to the edge of the desk of a guy named Matthew. And he said, come, follow me. Now, now, now just think about this just for a second. It's good to have imagination with the Bible. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to read the Bible. We're not going to add to God's word, but it's okay to like, just think about it in our day. Imagine you tomorrow at work. You're like, please stop, it's Sunday. I don't, I don't even want to think about it. And imagine someone coming up with a robe, some nice beach sandals, and they say, come, 
follow me. Some of y'all are already there. You're like, I'm gone. I'm out. I'm not even asking questions. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Lunch came early today. Jesus does that. And, and later, Jesus would be judged by the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were the goody two-shoes. The Pharisees were the people that thought they were better than everybody else. And so they looked down on everybody else because you couldn't get on their level. Level up, you ain't leveling this up. Maybe his up or her up, but ain't not this up, not my up. Because you're here and I'm here. And the Pharisees would be the ones who, when Jesus not only went to his office, Jesus went to his home because there's no place like, home. no place like home. Jesus went to his home. It, he, he didn't come to Jesus' home because Jesus, Jesus, although he had a hometown, Jesus was staying at like different places from time to time. Jesus didn't have a crib. You want to see Jesus on MTV, MTV Cribs? Like, check out, let me show you. Look at this chariot. Look at this, them gold wheels on there. No, no, no. Jesus like, hey, Pete, can I stay at your house? He's like, yes, Jesus, you know the answer. <laughs> Always. Hey, Pete, your wife cooking again? Yes, yes, Jesus. You know, so, so, so now all of a sudden he goes to Matthew's home and the judges be judging. They on the outside looking at Jesus, talking, texting, gossiping, you know, TMZ. I mean, they, they're putting it out that Jesus is hanging out with a sinner. And what they didn't understand is that's why Jesus came. He came for sinners. Jesus didn't come to the sinners so he could just come at the sinners. Jesus came because Jesus is for sinners. That's good news. That's, that's really good news, man. That, that means there's hope for me. Because I'm, I'm now a saint, but I was a sinner. My wife still sometimes reminds me I haven't been totally sanctified. and still some sin sometimes, but uh, I'm a saint. I'm thankful that Jesus came for sinners. If you're here today and you're a sinner, we are glad that you're here. We're glad that you're here because we're just like you. Except for Jesus said, yeah, and now you're forgiven. And we said, thank you. Like Jesus paid for our meal. <laughs> we forgot our wallet, and Jesus took care of the bill and the tip. Because he's like, no, this is grace. It's not works. I got it all. Home. Capernaum. Capernaum, this incredible place. This place where a centurion, like, like a big dog in the military, had a servant that was paralyzed, and then Jesus healed his servant. A place of ministry and a place of miracles, Capernaum. And, and they hear that Jesus is coming home, and Jesus gets back home, and the house is packed. Now, y'all know what I'm talking about because we live here in Florida, near the beach. How many of you, you think your house turned into a hotel this summer? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you have more family come out of the woods. I mean, you have people like, hey, we're going to be in the area. Can we stop by and see you? And you're like, yeah, next thing, you, you know. Not so much about seeing you, it is about staying with you, man. They really wanted to see you. You know, how many got the gift of hospitality? You love it, you love it, you love it till you don't. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, okay, y'all got to go now. You know, you're like, oh, we're gonna miss you. Like, thank you, Jesus. Because there's one thing about home, but it's another thing, like, it's cool to have people and stuff in our hospitable. We love having people over, we love having fun. But you know, you can overstay your welcome. You know what I'm talking about? And so, you know, they say guests are like fish, you know, this is good, you know, after a couple of days it starts to stink, you know, I, I don't know, but, but Jesus, but Jesus, we really do like having people over, but, but the truth is there, there, there's this like, you know, fine line where you come home and you're tired and you just want to relax, you want to let your hair down, I wish I knew what that was like, but you want to, you want to just let your hair down, but then when there's friends there, you feel like I got to entertain, but the best kind of friends, they like, hey, I don't care, you come out in them pajamas. You do your hair, and you're like, I need coffee. And they don't judge you. Or at least they don't tell you they judge you. <laughs> them friends. How many got some them friends? Thank God for them friends. And Jesus comes, and the them friends are there, but then there's some more friends that are there. And the word is Jesus is back in town, and the place is getting absolutely packed. Now, we packed today. We packed today. And we got people in the balcony, which is awesome. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but we had our first 8.30 gathering today here in Pensacola. I was psyching myself up. I was like, man, if there's only one person, I'm going to preach to them. But we had more than one person. 
had a good crowd for the first time. But there's something about a packed house, right? Like you always want to bring the same level of energy, but it's one thing to sing in front of 50 people and another thing to sing in front of 500 people. It's one thing to go to a concert and nobody's there and you're like, man, and another thing when like you just stay in a room only. It's just a different energy, different buzz. And uh, Jesus is home and everyone is heard, so everyone shows up and the house is so packed, no one can get in the door. Nobody. In fact, there's a line out the door. Um, This week, we went to Orlando, real quick trip, but we took our executive team. We went to Orlando for a one-day John Maxwell conference, and you had thousands of business leaders, and I've been reading John Maxwell, studying John Maxwell for 23, 24 years, and, um, you know, John always does this, and then at the uh, what he says is, hey, tomorrow I'm going to have a, a faith service. And now I'm a person of faith and you may not be. And he's talking to a lot of lost people. And he's like, and, and there's no judgment. But man, if you want to come, I'd love to have you. You know I love you. I just want to share my story. It's that simple. So I got up the next morning. We had gotten home, I don't know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, Tyler, something like that. We'd stayed up. And we were talking about the church and how can we change and what can we do better. And we were, man, we are going to what, past midnight. We were just talking. We were so excited. And and um, I'd mentioned that I was going to go the next morning because I know what John's going to do. He's going to give an invitation, kind of like what we do at the end of every gathering, give an invitation, because sometimes people have come for the first time. They've never heard the good news. They don't know there's good news. They know there's fake news. They know there's bad news. They know there's some news they don't want to hear anymore because it's like, ah, oh, too much. It's depressing. It's killing me. And so it's why we give. It's why John does it. And so I got up that morning and I was like, I'm going. I'm going to tell you a story. First crowd didn't get, don't tell them, okay? They'd be jealous. But I'm driving a vehicle. It might or it may or may not have been the church fan. I cannot tell you. (laughs) But I put in our hotel that we're going to. It's like kind of like if you've been to Atlanta World Congress Center, it's, it's like that in Orlando. So we're going to this Marriott's massive conference center and I put it in and it tells me, yep, you're right there. It's like, I don't know, nine, 10 minutes away. And it's like, let's go, man. And this was a different time. This was earlier. It was real early in the morning. So so I'm going. And then you know what my phone did? My phone changed the address on me. It says, get off at this exit. I'm like, I don't remember getting off at this exit. Because yesterday, we just right here, we just like, like, so I get off at this exit. I'm driving down this exit. And then I recognize this exit. This exit is not an exit, it's an entrance. We going to Disney! So I got a decision to make. John, I've heard John before. I love me some John. We're Disney. So I did what you would do. I took the church van right through the median and did a U-turn Don't judge me. I'm not, I'm telling the truth. Because I knew once I got in the gate of Disney, they would get my money. All of it. With a smile on my face. Yes, I'll go broke. So I get in there and I I know once I go in the gate, I'm going to get trapped in line. And so I'm looking, I'm like, surely they got a place to turn around. They don't got a place to turn around. But that church van made it. That church van made it through beautiful, green, luscious grass. Momentum Church. That was me at the wheel. If you saw me, I'm confessing my sin. It's just good. Bob says, confess your sin and you may be healed. So y'all pray for your preacher. See, what I'm really trying to tell you is you're welcome here. There's no perfect people allowed. Welcome to church. And I get back on the road and I'm going and I'm going and then I get there and I'm in the parking garage and it's way far away, so far away that they got a shuttle to pick you up to take you into here, John. Long story short, I get up and then I go to the door where I can have a little crosswalk and the door's locked. And so I go up and down this. Now I'm sweating. I just want to get there and hear John give his testimony and watch people come to Jesus. That's it. Go home. The door's locked. I'm running up and down. I finally, I'm, I'm in there. It's big. I'm in there. I'm, I'm coming in. And as I come in, they finish like two words to a song. And they finish the song. And as I'm walking in, John's walking up. And the, the Lord spoke to my heart and he said this. 
That's what it's like every Sunday for some people. So I just want to start off and say thank you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for being here. Because I was a, I'm, I was, no, I still am. As far as I know, Disney hasn't, a, but as far as I know, I, I'm, I'm still a pastor. And I'm a pastor, and I was tempted just to be like, man, I'm going to be late. I don't want to show up late. I already know what he's going to do. I know Jesus. But I was really excited because I want to watch all these people come to Christ. And it just kept getting harder and harder and harder. And the devil just kept trying to keep me because the devil didn't want me to see hundreds and hundreds of people coming to Christ at once because that would really mess him up and really fire me up. And the Holy Spirit said, some people, Tim, that's, now you get there early, Tim, because you're the pastor, but uh, some people fight hell so they can get a little bit of heaven. And I don't know who that is today. I really don't. But I, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you for fighting hell. And my desire is that you can be here and this be a little piece of heaven. So the house is packed and, and Jesus is sitting there and he's preaching. He's, he's sitting down and he's preaching. And, and there's something about preaching that's important. It's significant. It's ordained by God. It's God's vehicle to get you where you need to go. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God chose the foolishness of preaching, the foolishness. And, and, and sometimes God chose the least likely. But God ordained it. So if God's, you know, if, if God's, you know, touches on it, it's going to go good. And so he's preaching to them. Now, Paul would later tell Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Be ready to preach the word. My dad's here. My dad pastored in Columbia, uh, a lot of other places, but dad... Gave me opportunities in college to speak. Some of you heard this story, most of you haven't. And one Sunday, believe it or not, I was the worship leader. I was the worship leader. And so I led the congregation in worship and I came back and I sat down in my seat and my part was done. Now dad's part, now dad's turn. And dad looked at me and he said, you're preaching today. Dad, do you remember this? I was hoping you didn't because I was going to add some stuff to it. <laughs> this story was fixing to go, shoo, but he said, you're up today. You preach. I'm like, pardon me. Excuse me. What? And he was teaching me, be ready to preach. Be in certain season, out of season. Yeah. So I made him pay for it. I preached like three hours that day. I was like, everybody stand. We're going to read Psalm 119. <laughs> some, of <y'all> get, <laughs> some of y'all don't know. That's the longest chapter in the Bible. Anyways, but uh, preach the word. I'm thankful God called me to be a preacher. I'm thankful when I was scared to death of talking in front of people in the ninth grade, my knees would knock. Man, now it's a dance move. Back then, I wish it was a dance move. And they, my knees were knocking. I was like, ah, I couldn't talk in front of people. And God's like, you are absolutely perfect for me. I'm like, you want me to do what? Preach. I'm thankful I get to preach. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Jesus is preaching this house. This house is packed. They are in there. And the line is out the door. The line is out the door. There are four guys and these four guys. By the way, this um, story is told in three of the gospels. It's told in Matthew. It's told in Mark, which is where we are today. Mark's gospel, chapter uh, 2, 1 through 12. And it's told in Luke. Three gospels, same story. And the... These guys had a friend. So Jesus is in the house. Jesus is preaching. The house is packed. And I'm thankful the house is packed. I'm thankful you're here today. I'm thankful the house is packed. You know why the house was packed back then? It's the same reason why the house ought to be packed right now. It's because Jesus is in the house. That's why. That's why. Jesus is in the house. And so if Jesus is in the house, I want to get to the house. I want to be in the house. I want want a good seat in the house. I want to be, I'll stand in the house. I don't care. I'll stand outside the door. I just want to be near the house when the Lord is in the house. So it's why, Navarre, you guys ought to be packed. You guys are going to two gatherings in September. So let's pack. Let's pack it out. Right? What is that, 9 and 1030? You guys ought to pack it out. We got a night of worship a week from tonight. A week from tonight. We ought to pack it out. You see, some of you say, well, I, I just, I, you know, I don't know all the words, and yeah, that's me too. <laughs> me too. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Come anyways. 
You're like, well, I don't know anyone. Come anyways. That's where you meet someone. Well, I'm single. You might. I'm just telling you. <laughs> well, I don't feel like it. That's when you really need to come. The devil's trying to fight me. Talk me out of it. I think I might need to clip my toenails that night. The devil doesn't want you to be in the house when Jesus is in the house. Because wherever Jesus is, the spirit of God is because Jesus is God. And let me tell you something. Listen, lives get changed. People get healed. Sinners become saints. And the love of God flows. So, yeah, a week from tonight. It's going to be amazing. You know what we're going to do real quick? Here's what we're going to do. We always, we, we always bless somebody in the Dream Center. The Dream Center right here in Pensacola, Florida. We're going um, to bless them. We're going to give them a $2,000 check. We're going to bless them. And so, yeah, maybe $2,500. we are going to bless them. So like, I don't, you know, just, man, you want to get here. You want to hear what, what they're doing. Some of y'all care about sex trafficking. And thank God, because a great movie, we've got a lot of light on it right now. They, they, they're all about it, been doing it before the movie came out. Been doing it for a long time. So we're, it's, it's going to be amazing. Um, tonight's Blackwater. Tonight, we, how, many, how many men are getting baptized, Brian? I said, what? 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 I, I said 69 in the first gathering. It's, I'm glad I didn't say 80 and it was 69. I'd take it that way. 80 people. These men are going to get baptized. They're in prison, some of them for life, and they're saying, I want to be where Jesus is. Let's go. Give me that all day. There's four friends. There's four friends. You got four friends. I'm not talking about the people you just talk about the ball game with. I'm talking about the people that they got your corner. I'm talking about the people that they'll carry you when you need to be carried. I need some help real quick. Just one person. I don't care who it is. Just you don't have to talk. You don't have to say a word. I promise you. I just need you to hold something. Would one person come help me? Just one person. First person up. Whoever it is, first person up. Let's go. Let's go, Jason. My man, Jason. I got something for you. I got something for you. These are weights. Okay, how, how much do they weigh? Five pounds. Five pounds, let's go. Is it heavy? Nah, not yet. It's not, not yet. <laughs> I, I know you, Tim. I picked a good one. Did you curl them okay? She just, just kind of press them over your head. It's, it's not, yeah. She got Steve up here. Let's go. I should have. <laughs> I should have. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold them out here. Can you hold them? All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold out there the rest of my message. All right. All right, thank you. All right, okay, here we go. All right, everybody right here. So there's four friends. These four friends got a friend. The friend is paralyzed. The friend cannot walk to Jesus. The friend cannot move to Jesus. The friend has a problem. What's his problem? He's paralyzed. He's paralyzed. It doesn't feel like five pounds anymore, does it? No, we just start again. <laughs> it goes up real fast. Pretty soon you're going to have 300s in either arm. Um, so these friends get their friend and they say, we're picking up your mat. We're taking you to Jesus because he's paralyzed. Something is physically wrong with him. How many know people, you got friends, you got neighbors, relatives, there's something physically wrong with them. They're fighting disease, sickness, maybe they recently had COVID, maybe they're fighting cancer, whatever it is. Maybe it's emotional, maybe it's mental, I, I don't know. But you got a friend and it's like something is wrong. Thank God, thank God for friends because a, a iron sharpens iron, right? Which means sometimes there's friction, but it's okay. Iron sharpens iron. And so these friends pick up the mat, one on each corner. There's four men and one in the middle. And they're carrying him and they get to the house. And they stop at Chick-fil-A, but it's Sunday and it's closed. So now they're late and now they go to another place to get food. And one of them is the detail guy. One of them is like, we're going to be late. Let's go. We, you know how it is when Jesus is there. It's gonna be, we're, gonna, we're not going to get in the door. And then they get there and they can't get in the door. And what does he do? 
He said, I told you so. <laughs> Had you eaten breakfast before we left, like we talked about, we wouldn't be late. Now we can't get in the door. They couldn't get in the door. It was a problem. Why? Because their friend needed Jesus. Who do you know that physically needs Jesus? It's starting to get, now you just hold it as long as you can. No, we're getting there. Okay, and when you're done, when you're done, you just take a break, right. just put it back down, take a breather, and then come back up. All right. <laughs> I love you. You know that, man. I love you. <laughs> so here's the deal. These men are sweating. They feel like they're holding weights out here, and they're carrying their friend to Jesus. And they get there, and I don't know how long they traveled, but even five pounds out here starts to get heavy. And then they finally get to the door, and they can't even get in the door. What the? Well, I can't even get in the door? You know, and if you ever go to Universal or a place like that, you know, people don't like you cutting in line. You had someone come in front of you, excuse me, just for my right here, and then they go to the front of the line. I'm not talking fast pass. <laughs> I won't finish that though. So anyhow, they, 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 you ain't getting in front of me, man. You ain't getting in front of me. Don't cut in front of me. I, I was here 15 minutes late. You were 20. And, and so they're like, what are we going to do? We got to get a friend to Jesus. What are we going to do? And some of y'all know this story because you grew up in church and some of you don't. Uh, let me tell you what they did. They said, okay, let's take you to the roof. A lot of people think this was Peter's house. So now let's just pretend we're Peter. So now all of a sudden, these jabronis are getting on top, on top of his roof, and Jesus is sitting preaching. He's saying, the kingdom of God. And all of a sudden, drywall starts falling up. And Peter's like, those darn squirrels. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to get my rod. I'm going to take care of them. And all of a sudden, it's not squirrels. There's a hole. And how big does a hole have to be to let a man on a mat down? Pretty big hole. And Peter's like, no, 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 no. And now it's big chunks. Last gathering, when I wasn't looking, my friend went like this. Okay, okay. And, so, and, so, and, and now it's big chunks, and now the hole's getting bigger. And Peter's like, what are you doing? I, my, my HOA is going, what? I don't do what? Oh, my good. Oh, my good. What are you? And, and now all of a sudden, there's a man. And they probably didn't set out with rope, but somehow they figured out we're going to need rope because we got to lower him. So they couldn't get through. Now they're going to rip the roof off. Now they're going to lower him down. And as they're, as they're lowering him down, Jesus is sitting there teaching. Somehow they figured out how to put him right in front of Jesus. I still, there's something there I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> there's something. There's something. No, <laughs> there's something I haven't figured out about that somehow. I mean, think about it. Someone on your roof and someone is figured out right where Jesus is and they're lowering him right there. And, and here's Jesus. And now all of a sudden, Jesus has a man and everyone's like, what's Jesus going to do? See, what Jesus saw was he saw their faith. He saw their faith. But what Jesus said is where I want to go today. Jesus saw their faith because it took the four. You're going to need four people in your life. If that man did, you're going to. Who are those four? Who are those four people? They're in your corner. They, <laughs> any, any four want to come up here and help? Hey, there, there's, there's four. They're in your corner. They're going to fight for you. That's right. Just stand like that the rest of the time. That's good, Jason. That's a lot. So they're going to fight for you. They're going to come out swinging, man. You, don't, you know what I'm saying? They're the kind of friend, if someone starts bad-mouthing you, they don't even, you know, they're like, well, I'm going to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. You know, Lord, should I hit them? No, it's like, Lord, forgive me. I just, I just busted them. That's my friend. What'd you say? Hold on just a second. Let me call him real quick. I got his number right here on speed dial. But say that again to my friend. What did you say about him? If someone talks bad to you about someone else, just try that once. You may not even have their number. It's worth it. It's just hilarious. Just a look on their face. I thought they'd get more laughter. Thank you. Somebody got me. Thanks, Sadie. I said, let's go. So, four people in your corner. And by the way, whose corner are you in? By the way, what, what weight are you holding? Because we all hold something. And some of us are holding unhealthy weight, and the truth is we can't be holding the weight that we need to hold because we're holding the unhealthy weight that we shouldn't be still holding. So we got to drop them weights. You ready to drop them weights? Not yet. Not yet. Give me one more out here, Jason. What you got? That's good. You just hold him down here. Know, hold him down here. <laughs> I feel like we got the right guy up here. Let's go, Jason. Now watch this. You got to have somebody. 
and you got to be somebody, somebody. You got to be somebody, somebody. The, the kind that shows up, the kind that will carry you, the kind that even when it gets hard and you're struggling, it's okay because, man, this is getting hard and I'm shaking a little bit, but I'm still committed. I'm still committed. I'm still going to get you there. May take a little bit extra of my time, maybe some more, maybe some more uh, phone calls, maybe some more whatever. Maybe I'm showing up at your house. Maybe it's in the middle of the night, but I'm here for you. I'm your friend. I got your back, man. I got you. Those kind of friends. And be that kind of friend. If you'll be that kind of friend, you'll have those kind of friends. It's amazing how God works. Do you have those friends? If not, are you scared to get those friends because you lost those friends? If you stay scared, you'll never have those friends again. And it gets heavy at times. Is it heavy? Okay. Is it, drop those weights, man. Just drop them. Right where you at. Just drop them. You, Jason, stay right, stay right there just for a second. Now just hold these. Don't do the math. Just hold those for me, okay? I'm going to finish my message. So these guys get their friend to Jesus, and then Jesus says this. He's, he sees their faith, and then Jesus says to the man on the mat, Jesus says this. He says, your sins are forgiven. Now, there's some Pharisees even in the crowd. Sometimes you can have a Pharisee close to you. You don't know they're a Pharisee until they open their mouth. They expose themselves with their words. And the Pharisees, all of a sudden, they don't say anything because I don't want you to know. But the thing about Jesus is he's God. And so Jesus knew what they were thinking before they ever said something. And so knowing what they were thinking, Jesus looked at him and said, because their issue was the fact that Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. What's interesting is Jesus didn't first say, get up and walk here. Here's the reason why. Because what everybody saw was physical. But what Jesus knew was spiritual. What everybody saw was he was paralyzed. What Jesus knew was that his soul was sick. What everybody wanted was for this man to get up and move. What Jesus wanted was for this man to be set free spiritually. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Jesus saw the spiritual when you and I oftentimes just stop at the physical. Jesus knew the spiritual, and Jesus went first to the spiritual because the spiritual is more important than the physical. Some of you are suffering today. Some of you are battling today. Some of you are pushing through today. Some of you, you just feel like, man, I ought to quit. I ought to turn around like it's not worth it anymore today. Let me tell you something. As a Christian, one day it will be worth it all. It'll be worth it all. It'll be worth it all. No more pain, no more suffering, no more cancer, no more tears, no more losing your memory, no more not controlling your tongue. None of it. It will be heaven forever. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Jesus knew what they were thinking. He turned to him and he said, what's easier for me to tell him your sins are forgiven or for me to say, get up and walk. But for you, so that you can see basically who I am in the cliff notes, because Jesus is Jesus. He's God. He can forgive sins and he can heal you. He can heal you physically, get up and walk. He can heal you spiritually. But the two beautiful words first came out of Jesus' mouth was he says, son, your sins are forgiven. Son and forgiven. I wonder if we got any sons in the house today. I wonder if we got any daughters in the house today. I wonder if Jesus passed by you sometime in your life and you went from sinner to saint where Jesus called you son and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm no longer a sinner. I'm now a son. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm now a saint. Like I've been made right with God. God is pleased with me, not because of what I'm doing or struggling to do, but actually the one that came through for me. He took my place. Jesus took my place. I wonder. And he says, so to show you, stand up and walk, grab your mat, get up and walk. And he says, and go, someone say home, home. go home. Can you imagine this is the greatest walk off ever? <laughs> I'm going to run slow just to take it all in. And when a home run is a grand slam, and we won the game, and when I come to home plate, we all celebrate. We all celebrate. Walk off home run. And this man now walks through 
what he couldn't get through before. See, when Jesus heals you, you'll be able to get through what used to stop you. You'll be able to walk on through. And, and, and like, if he can part the Red Sea, he can part impossibilities in your life. And you can just walk on through. In fact, you kind of do it with a strut. It's just, yeah, what's up here? Yeah. Because Jesus changed you. I wonder if I'm talking to any people here today that Jesus changed you. Do you remember what you were like before Jesus changed you? Here's what I know. Here's what I know. What I know, what I know, I'm going to wrap this up. What I know is you and I are holding on to something. Somewhere, some point in our life, you and I, we pick up stuff and we pick it up because we think it will be worth it. We think this will make me better or this will make me stronger. This will make me happier. This will man, make me more fulfilled, whatever it is. And I'm not talking about lifting weights. You get what I'm saying. It's an analogy. It may be this. It may be that. It may be and nothing wrong with a boat. I hope you all have a boat. I hope you let me know that you have a boat. But it may be like if, if I get a boat, it's going to solve everything. No, no, no. It may be like if I move here, I'm going to be happier. The problem is you are moving to where you are going to. And so there's something deeper at play here than just the physical. There's something like a spiritual thing. There's a spiritual thing. Someone say spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. And sometimes we picked up stuff that we thought would make us better, and it didn't. But I want to tell you today that there are some weights that we should pick up. There's some people in our life that it, after a while, being Jesus to them, it gets a little heavy, it gets a little hard, but I wanna tell you today, heaven is worth it. It's worth it. Who are you carrying to Jesus? Because the only thing we carry to heaven, the only thing we carry to heaven is people. Who are you carrying? What's well, hard and it's getting heavy. I'm trying to be Jesus, but I, the devil's coming after me and, and this and that. And I, I get it. I'm right there with you. But I'm telling you that the weight is worth it. I've been inviting them. I've been loving on them. I've been encouraging them. I've been trying, Pastor Tim, but, but they, they, they don't come. They tell me they'll come, they don't come. So I'm just gonna give up. No, because that's a corner that's gotta be carried because they can't get up and move to Jesus. And I don't know their story. Maybe you don't even know their story, but I'm telling you his story is history and it, it's worth it. It's worth it. Now, I gave you a couple of things, Jason. You still got all three of those? <laughs> All three. Let's see what we got here. So we've got a $10 Chick-fil-A gift card. This one's $15. And this one's a 50. Which one would you like? You take one of them. Just take one. Take the 50. <laughs> Both illustrations, y'all hung me out to dry. No, they're humble. They're like, I'll take, let me have this one. That one's worth more than these. In fact, with that one, you can buy more of these. Why? Because that one has more value than this does. You know it has more value than maybe some of the things that you're holding right now? Is the weight of carrying someone to Jesus who can't get there themselves. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, man. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Love you. Appreciate you. You're the man. You're the man. Who are you carrying to Jesus? So we got a night of worship next week. Hey, it's one thing to be in the house when Jesus is in the house. Who are you bringing with you? Because I bet everybody in the house, I bet everybody in the house, they were in the house, and I bet the truth of it was they probably knew someone that needed Jesus also. And these guys, they just didn't take no for an answer. Don't you love that? I love that. They did not take no for an answer. They're like, oh, we can't come through? Okay. Oh, we can't get through the door? Oh, we can't yell? Get Jesus' attention. Okay, we'll get up on the roof. Oh, now it's a roof. Now we got to dig through the roof. That's fine. We're going to dig through the roof. Oh, we got to make it bigger because the mat, the dimension. Okay, let's, let's do it bigger. Oh, we, we need rope. Someone go get rope. And the four of them were working together and dream work, right? Teamwork makes the what? The, the dream work. And they get them to Jesus. And this cat gets up and he goes home. And don't you know when he goes home, everyone sees he's healed. And I'm thankful that they didn't give up on the weight that hung in the balance 
of bringing their friend to Jesus. And I wanna encourage all of us to do the same thing. All of us to do the same thing. Here's the truth. I know I'm the pastor of Momentum Church, but if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit in you just like I do. And you know people I don't know. You know people that I may never meet. You know people that you may be the only Jesus they ever know. You may be the only Bible they ever read. You may be the only Jesus they ever experience. How, how many of you, you ever had someone like misrepresent Jesus? You're like, I'm pretty sure you were foaming at the mouth. You're smiling when you're talking about hell. That's Jesus, I want anything to do with Jesus, right? And some people are looking at us, so let's hold tight to that corner. Let's not give up. Let's not give up. And let's push through. Let's not take no for an answer. On friend day, which is September 17th, what if every person here brought one with you? You know what we know? Here's what we know. Here's facts. Here's what we know. We know that when our guest numbers go up, salvations go through the roof. And I'll close with this. How many of you are changed life because someone was part of a team, a process, a move of God to get you to Jesus. If that's you, stand up real quick. Just stand up real fast, stand up, stand up. If if, if, if you wouldn't be here today, if God used someone in your life, God used people in your life, or turn around and look. Turn around and look look at all the people. Now, 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 Now watch this. What if just the people standing took this message to heart and said, you know what? God, help me. And if you ask God to help you, you think he's going to tell you no? (laughs) Right? I'm busy. (laughs) Trying to figure this AI thing out. (laughs) That's funny. I'm going to laugh. That was funny. (laughs) He's not too busy for you. What if we all, would you dream, 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 dream with me just for a minute? What if we all said, Jesus, I'm going to care about my neighbor like you care about him. I'm going to care about my person I work out with, my friend, my trainer. God, my boss, my manager, the owner of the company, my employees, we all have people in our life. What if if we said, you know what, I'm doing everything I can. I'm not talking about putting them in a chokehold. (laughs) Tell them, you're coming to church. You know, and they're like trying to tap out. Um, Just talking about being salt and light so that something's different in you and they want what you have and they don't. And you invite them. Here's how you invite them. Come sit with me on the 17th. Can you say this real easy? Come sit with me on the 17th. Come sit with me. You could text them today. Hey, man, a month from now, I'd love you to come sit with me. Here's what I promise you. I'm going to bring a message that God will empower. The Holy Spirit will be here. The worship will be fire. And the chance of your friend being able to get up off that mat and walk is something you'll never forget. You'll never forget it. And it's worth it. And then there's nothing better than watching the man who got healed got up off the mat and walked out. Go tell more people that didn't know like he didn't know about the one who he now knows, the one who's always known him, Jesus. There's something about it. And as Christians, that's what it's all about. And if you're not all about that, I'd ask you, are you a Christian? Because that's what he's all about. And so I want everybody's help. You guys be seated. We're going to close here with a message. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for being a testimony. Thank you for showing up. Can I pray for us today? God, I pray right now through the power of the Holy Spirit that all of a sudden you would start laying names and people and friends and relatives and neighbors God, co-workers on our hearts, flood our minds, flood our hearts with people. Lord, maybe we just see, maybe we just hear them. We see them, but we don't know the real issue. We don't see the soul, we just see the sickness. We don't see them as what could be a saint. We just see them as a sinner. God, I pray you put them on our hearts, put them on our minds, God. And I pray, Lord, in the next month, we begin to pray and ask you for strength and courage to reach out, God, and just to ask them, hey, man, come over. Let's fire up the green egg. Let's let's have lunch afterwards. But man, I'd love for you to come sit with me. That's friend day. You're my friend. Would you come?
God, thank you, Lord, that on the 17th, we're going to see people stand up all over this place and they're going to pass from death to life. They're going to move from being a sinner to a saint. God, thank you for that because of what you did here today. Thank you for moving in our hearts. God, thank you for helping us reach out. God, thank you for giving us the courage to be bold, to not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's what Paul said. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. Thank you, Jesus. How many feel God right now? You feel God. Would you raise your hand? You feel God working in your heart. You feel God like the Holy Spirit's, man, rapid fire putting people on your heart. They need you. They need you. That single mama, that, that, that guy that's going through a divorce right now. Would you, look, look, look here with me. Look here with me. Would you look up? Would you do me a favor? Would you come over? I got a corner. Would you grab a corner? Would you help me? I don't know exactly what it will look like, but I know that it'd be worth it. The wait will be worth it. Some of you, you've invited and invited, invited, and they've stalled and stalled and stalled. Some of you, uh, one of my friends was like, got a friend, he's like, I promise you I'm coming by this time, you know, and it's getting closer to that time. And uh, he's like, I know, I know, I promise you, I promise you. And you're waiting, you're like, dear God, is he gonna come? Is she gonna come? She's been saying this for years. It's worth the wait. The wait is worth the wait. The wait's worth the wait. Would you grab a corner with me and can we carry them together to Jesus? I promise you, I'll preach a fire message that'll speak to their heart. I'll give the gospel clearly. And then it's what God does. You and I can't save them, but we can carry them to Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can say, son, your sins are forgiven. And the wait's worth the wait. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, um, man, God loves you. He loves you so much. And maybe you have so much shame because of the pain that's come from your sin and you didn't really realize it was sin. You just know it was a lot of pain and you have so much shame in your life that you feel like God doesn't want anything to do with you. You think God doesn't love you. You think God could never forgive you. You think God is just angry at you. God just wants to get even with you. And, and maybe you've not been a good person. Maybe you've gone like way far away and you've done things you shouldn't have and the things you should have done, you didn't do. The things you should have said, you didn't. The things you shouldn't have said, well, they came flying out your mouth. And you know you've not been a good person. You know you're a screw-up. You know you've messed up. And, and here's, the, here's the difference. The devil will take your head and stick your face in your sin. And he'll rub it. Before that, he was inviting you to the plate. And then he'll put your face. And he'll make you feel shame. Here's what God does. God cleans you up. God takes the shame away. Not only the sin away, God takes the shame away. And God makes you new and there's some of you today and this has been my prayer there's some of you here today and like today God just wants to clean you up God wants to give you a fresh start God wants to forgive your sins God wants to call you son God wants to call you daughter God wants to smile as you get up and begin to walk because you have been set free from what has held you down for so long. And, and, and it's simple. Here's how you do it. It's real simple. It's nothing you, you have to earn. It's not, it's not become a member of the church. It's just you simply realize you need him, Jesus, to do for you, you, what you could never do for yourself. It's acknowledging that you're a sinner and believing that he is Lord, that he is Jesus, that he died on the cross for you. He bled for you. He literally, he literally absorbed the wrath of God on the cross because of our sin, because sin got to be punished. And why did Jesus absorb all of that sin? So you and I could be made clean. So you and I could be forgiven. One of my favorite scriptures is Romans 5. It says, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You know why Christ died for you? Because he's for you. Why would someone take the bullet if they didn't love you? He took the cross. For you because he loves you and scripture says that that if we'll put our faith and trust in him god will make us new he'll forgive us of our sin how we do that here is we pray a prayer you're not praying to me we're praying to god i just got the microphone we're going to talk to god and we're going to say god i'm a sinner and i need you to be my savior and and if you will pray that and not just saying the words but if you will ask god to forgive you you know what god's going to do God's gonna forgive you of your sin. And now this is a start. 
you are born into the family of God. And spiritually, you're a baby, but that's how we all start out. And God didn't act, he didn't, he didn't expect you to act like a senior citizen when you first come to Christ, because you're a baby. But he wants to make sure you're breathing. I believe there are people in this gathering, I believe right now, Navar, you're watching, you're, you're watching this message, man, man, you're like, oh, he's talking to me. I believe there are men in Blackwater right now watching, there are people around the world watching online, and you know right now, like, you, you're feeling something. Can I tell you, it, it, it's not just emotion that you're feeling, it's God reaching out to you in love. Would you receive them today? Aren't you glad the guy on the mat didn't say, I, I don't deserve to be a son. I don't deserve to get up and walk because Jesus, you said my sins are forgiven, but Jesus, you know all my sin. Aren't you glad he just said thank you and he got up? I think we ought to have some thank yous today. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's pray. Would you pray with me right now? Would you say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I receive your love and all that go with it. Thank you for bleeding for me, dying for me. I believe you rose again. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of all of my sin. I give you my life. I receive your life. Now teach me how to live. I now declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Help me to live for you. Tell others about you. And put my trust in you. In Jesus' name my favorite part of Sundays right here. How many of you did that? If you did that, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. Their hands in the air. We're going to count to three. Anybody else? I want you to raise a hand. We got some friends. They're greeters. They got blue bags. Inside the blue bag is a Bible and some resources to help you. Our student pastor, Steve's here. Steve's son was just born this week. Your mom and dad are here carrying on your name, carrying on your legacy, more people came into the room. The birthing moment matters. We wanna give you a good start. You just, you are born into the family of God and we wanna get you resources because you're just starting, this is the start. If you wanna do that, hold your hand up on the count of three. We're gonna clap one more time. Church, let's go nuts when they do it. They got courage, let's show up for them. Don't wait, don't hesitate. I want you to raise a hand up. Here we go, ready? Navarre, hold it up. Blackwater, hold it up. You're watching online. Let us know in the chat, would you? Here we go, one, two, three. Put those hands back up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hold it up. Let's go, Navarre, hold it up. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, Blackwater, hold it up. Let's go. Incredible. 